G'day guys, um, thought we'd do the build video on the Jeep just while we're here in Cobar. Try and get it done, keep forgetting. Alright, so I think we'll just start with what it is. It's a 1969 Jeep Gladiator J truck. Um, it's been in my family since 71, so it's just been handed down, handed down from my grandfather and father, father and me. And we built it up two years ago and got it on the road. Um, so it's still pretty basic. There's nothing flash in it, nothing's been modernized. Like we've just got no air con, no stereo, none of that sort of stuff. Um, but we'll just do a quick walk around on it. And if there's any questions, just leave it in the comments because I'm gonna forget stuff because there's a lot on it. Um, what do we got first? Bar work. Bar work. Um, so all the bar work was made by me and a mate in Townsville. Um, we originally built it for the blue wagon you'll see on our Facebook pages. Um, and then we put it onto this when we built this one. So the front bar is just a full tube bar with a one of the Ridge Rider 12,000 pound winches in it. Um, we've only ever used the winch once, but it worked. So can't give any bad news about that. Uh, rock sliders, we just made it to the same dimensions as the GQ Patrol ones. Um, they're all chassis mounted. They've been bounced off a few times. Um, as for everything else, Everything on Jeeps sits above the chassis rails, so I haven't got any under chassis protection or anything like that. The bottom of all like the gas bottle holders is all RHS, so it's all pretty sturdy. Um, rear bars, 6mm RHS, and then it's all chassis mounted. Um, it's strong enough that I clamp. When I'm making things, I use it basically as a vice. I flog everything on it, and it's never dented nothing, so it'll bounce off anything we need to do. Um, that's probably it for protection wise. Oh, she's pretty big, we don't... All the guards are all 4 mil plate. So we can bounce off anything there. Underneath the generator box there is 4 mil angle welded along the bottom. So that way it'll all slide across. Um, what are we going to do next? Suspension and wheels. Uh, suspension and wheels. These wheels we only just put on it in... Where were we? Bundaberg. Uh, they're 315 so 35s. Uh, we were running Coopers, but they reckon because of COVID we couldn't get them at the time. But we'll see how they go. They're Dixie Pack all terrain tyres on 17 by 9 neg 12 dynamic round hole rims. Um, but yeah, we'll see how they're really smooth tyres, very, very quiet. But it's the first time I've run all terrain, so see how they last. Um, suspension wise, it's all Rusty's off road suspension. They're hand peened springs from the States. in. Rainbow, what's it called? Rainbow City, Alabama, they're made. Um, they're their shocks as well, just hydraulic shocks, just standard oil, no gas. Uh, they're just standard springs. I've lightened the front springs right up. When we did the engine conversion, I'll go into that in a minute. We needed to light the front springs up because it was just riding way too rough. So we lightened the front up so it handles a lot better. We've lightened the rear up because these have a two ton payload and we don't obviously have anywhere near that. So the rear is just a bit softer, just so it rides a bit nicer. Um, it is just single shock all the way around. The the blue wagon I had, we had twin shocks each corner, and it was great, it did make a big difference, but I haven't done that on this yet. But we'll get there. Um, what's next? Uh, drivetrain. All right, drivetrain. We're running uh, 2003 LS1. Um, the original AMC was just horrible on fuel and you know they're not the most powerful thing in the world um so we've gone to the ls1 we're getting pretty good fuel economy now we average sort of 16 to the 100 and more power than we need we did have to chop the front up to go to a GE patrol radiator because the original radiator was quite small and it was getting hot um made it to that is the turbo 700 that a mate in townsville Lockie barnes he um built that up and it's it's incredible it's holding up really well considering the car's four ton, the van's two ton, so it's not exactly a light combo, and with the big wheels and everything. I uh, made it to the MP241 transfer case that comes on the Silverados, and then just a standard Jeep down the diffs, uh, 373 diff gears. 
Um, it's running twin 16 inch maritime fans to try and stay cool. Other than that, I've done the alternator relocation kit. So move it up the top, get it out of harm's way. And we run a hydro boost instead of vacuum assisted brakes, just cause the standard Jeep brakes pretty shit. Um, other than that, the motor, everything's all standard. Just got an RV cam in it. So just to get a bit more torque out of it. Um, it is running a four inch snorkel. I just got, it runs down under the cab and up the back there. Bit of PVC pipe on the snorkel head. Um, I think that's sort of it for drivetrain wise. Um, true cool transmission cooler, can't beat them. It's the biggest you can buy and they just work oh, incredible. They're the best thing I've ever fitted. Um, I'm a mechanic by trade and I've fitted a lot of them and just, yeah, they're incredible. I do have a Aeroflow engine or cooler in behind the radiator. Um, next. Um, as for like UHFs and that, we don't actually have a UHF. We just got a handheld. Um, but we will be getting one down the track. Obviously, need one. Uh, interior wise, like I said, very basic. Uh, all auto meter gauges, VMS, which I can't really talk highly of, hasn't been real good. And just reverse camera that's on the car and the van. We just run a Bluetooth speaker for stereo when we want some music. Um, the B&M Quicksilver ratchet shifter, yeah, it looks weird down there on the right hand side, but when you got a kid sitting in the middle, it's great not having the shifter in the way. But yeah, no aircon, no heater, no electrics, it's great, love it. And then in the cab, obviously in the back there, the J trucks had a sliding window. Um, that's out of a J20. And then there's a Chev sliding window in the front of the canopy. So when we're driving, we can open them and little Zeus can poke his head out and loves sticking his head out into the breeze or if you open ours, he can poke his head through into the cab itself. Um, just back to drive line with the fuel capacity. We got a 180 litre custom tank in the back and a standard Nissan 100 litre tank in the front for tanks. The, the back one, it's got a few baffles in it, but the front one doesn't because it's a it's an old carby fuel tank, so it's got no cradle or anything in there. Um, so we run a two-way tap, the Pollock two-way valve, six-port two-way valve, so we can run the feed line and return line um, through a low-pressure Carter fuel pump that feeds a four-litre surge tank and then out of the surge tank into just a VL pump. And then... It's got the main high pressure fuel filter through to the motor and two little filters pre the Pollock changeover valve. There's there and a 110 litre water tank between the cab and the tray. Um, water tanks hooked to 12 volt water pump. I've got three different taps. One runs through a hot water system in the back. Um, I think we're onto the canopy. Uh, it's just a homemade canopy that was on on the tray when we got the tray and we just put a frame in it and fitted it all out it was just an empty open canopy when we got it but it had nice height and offered everything we wanted um dc system a couple of years ago we converted everything over to anadrive and you know we have no affiliation with anadrive but they're incredible they're the best thing we ever did so we got the DC, you just want to open that canopy door the other side. Mm -hmm. um, we got the DC, DC 40 plus, and then the 40 amp AC, DC charger. Um, this is still running two AGM batteries, Full River and uh, I don't know what the other one is, just a cheapie. They're both about five years old, I think now. They still work great. This will be going lithium, but I can't justify it till they shit themselves. Um, Thumper, two cylinder compressor, that's great. And then on the wall, you can just see all the circuit breakers for everything there. Um, nice and simple, works incredible. We've got two and a drive 180 watt panels on the roof. Um, I do have a 300 watt set of portable panels, but they never get used, they're just there for if we park in the shade, we can run them out. Um, fridges. Two, we've got one 60 litre companion fridges side and one through there 
the other side. I'll show you that one and get around there. Both on MSA drop slides. Um, I just went with the MSA because they're a lot more compact. Like a lot. I looked at the clear views and everything and they're really chunky. And just to make more room, we went with these. Companion fridges, have, they've been incredible. Um, the one the other side, go around there now. It's been in there, I think we've had it six years now. Never faltered. So we had this fridge and a Ingle 40. Um, and we got rid of the Ingle and got another companion. And then about 12 months ago, no, I remember 12 months ago, four months ago, something like that, we decided we wanted just a drinks fridge. So we've got the new companion uh, 40 litre. So we got the first generation, second generation, and the third generation companions. And yeah, they've, they've just been incredible. Great on power. The new one's ridiculously good on power. Um, in this canopy itself, just got drawers and false floor in the back. So it's made a false floor, so around the drawers fits all the storage boxes nicely. Made it so we can sleep in the back. Isabel can sleep up top if we ever need to, but we do our swags up there. Um, hot water system there. We've tried tried all the dear ones, all your big brand name ones, and they've all been junk. This is the cheapest one we've ever brought, and it's been the best one we've had. So, goes to show. In this corner is just sort of spare tire, chainsaw, leads, compressor hose, shower up top here, that sort of stuff. Um, this box here is just the start battery. Just purely for starting the car. A couple of Oki straps, that sort of stuff. Two four kilo gas bottles. This one here is Isabel's toys, like her wet toys, stuff, so creek pool stuff. Um, we've got one of the little Bunnings Euro ladders here, a little three step. And then in the roof, the got the six foot ladder there if we need to clean panels and all that sort of stuff. Clean roofs, get on the roof. Max tracks on the back there. Uh, in the back, we've got the full length Titan single drawer, just for our clothes when we're camping. Um, and then this side, we've got the King's Titan double drawers. This one, just sort of all the cooking utensils and kitchen cupboard and this one's the pantry when we haven't got the van um, up top oh sorry just got the boxes this side this box here is just all Zeus's stuff so it's all these toys and food and all that sort of stuff 10 litre air tank and then just a generator box we've just got the King's um, 2 kVA generator it's been unreal um, for the swags um, for me and Em we have the Darchi Nebula um, it's been really, really good. There's a lot of room in them. You can sit up. They're not really a dome. They're more of a square swag. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been unreal. Isabel has the uh, Oz 10 the stretcher cot, like those stretchers that you set up. You slide the poles up and it's got the tent. It's all in one. She loves it. it takes up bugger all room. She can set it up and it's really light. And yeah, they just pack away up the front there. They don't take up any room and they're always there. Then we don't have to worry about putting them in or forgetting them. Um, just in the back here, obviously there's our big camp table. Uh, we used to have a folding one, but it shit itself. So we just got a one piece one for now. Um, this stuff here is usually, so we carry a full size gas smoker. Um, M loves baking, biscuits, I'll make me bread, all that sort of stuff. And those little Webers and barbecues just haven't got enough room to do full roast and that sort of thing. Like, you know, we love doing 10, 12 hour slow cooked beets, beefs. Uh, we also carry the Gladiator, two burner gas stove. Um, anyone that disses gas cooking, it's because you haven't brought the right gear. Um, yeah, gas has got a bad rep for when it's been windy and you can't cook anything and it blows your flame out. But those Coleman Hyper Flame, the Gladiator series, we've had that in bloody cyclonic winds up the cape even here the other day it was blowing the lid shut we had to put the awning in and yeah no nah, not a drama it'll never blow out it's the, the the design they've got around the burner the pot plates they're just incredible but they just sort of go up in the back up in here we've got miles of room just throws it all in and we've got three of the what brand of chairs are they um, these are the Oztent. The Oztent Gecko chairs with the table on the side. That's a pretty old one. 
They've said this is an old one. They've, we've had them for years and years now. But um, no, they've been really good. So all that just gets thrown in the back when we're driving. Um, when we leave the van and go camping, or we're going somewhere we don't want to take the van, all we basically do is put our food and clothes in and, and the car's ready to go. It's always, it's fully self-sufficient. Um, like it hasn't been plugged into power I think it's for six months now. And like when we were in Meribah, we had a week and a half, or two weeks of solid rain and uh, she still holds up well. It'll be interesting to see how it goes when we go lithium in it. So I just thought I'd show you a quick look at what it looks like when it's loaded. So this is fully loaded, table, stove, smoker, chairs. That's basically everything that goes in the back. We'll throw Zeus's dog bed in the back here, but yeah, that's it. So when we leave the van, it looks exactly the same. Um, there's nothing really gets added to it. But yeah, just sort of give you a quick look. With the canopy, the, we've got two, I don't know if you can see them up top there. Everyone calls them Shrekies. They're um, two scup vents, they're marine ones. The reason I went with those is they don't have to be open or shut. They've got two stages to them, so any water that comes in will just run out of it without going into the cab. Um, I haven't really bothered trying to make the canopy dustproof because if you can get a good positive pressure, then it doesn't matter what sort of openings you've got, dust ain't getting in. We proved that to ourselves on our last cave trip at the end of last year. Um, the canopy door on that side, the, there wasn't quite enough purchase on the T-bar locks and the door popped open all the time. So we actually did the whole cape trip with the door sitting bloody, what was it, 25, 30 mil open. And I just sort of strapped it shut. And the whole way up and down, we got not one scrap of red dirt in the canopy. Um, so as long as you can get enough positive pressure in there, you won't get any dust. But yeah, they've, I think they're only like 40 bucks from Rotec Marine. You can get the ones like caravans that have to be open and shut, but then for rains, you've got to get out and shut them. You've got to remember to open them. Whereas these are just put them up there and forget about them. They've been brilliant. Hey, uh, just realized I forgot to wrap up the build video. I just sort of stopped talking. Um, so just sorry, we're sitting in the van. We're just doing the editing now and realized that. But um, yeah, that's our Jeep. That's what we travel in full time. Uh, if you've got any questions about it, anything I haven't mentioned or things you want to know about stuff we run, uh, just leave it in the comments below. Uh, please, please spread the word, like and share our videos. If you like it, let us know what you don't like in the comments if you don't like something. But that's the first of our build videos. Up next will be the build video of our caravan. Um, that's another pretty unique one you might want to check out. But yeah, thank you. Hope you liked it. See you next time.